Welcome to Back to the Basic, and I'm your host, Kev Frey. Today's video is entitled, Alchemist or Alchemic. Welcome to Back to the Basics, where you learn facts, hope you embrace it. Watch, like, share, bring in awareness. Watch, like, share, bring in awareness. I'm fearless. Welcome to Back to the Basics, where you learn facts, hope you embrace it. Watch, like, share, bring in awareness. Watch, like, share, bring in Let's talk about the nature of the atom. To understand how the elements came about, it is necessary to have a basic knowledge of chemistry or chemic mysteries, which is the process of combining chemicals and bringing about chemical ray actions. The simplest particle of life to date is the quarks of which atoms are composed of. This put quarks on the other side of things without a sum, as opposed to the first element, hydrogen, which has a sum of one. And thus, we ancient masses who are alchemists or all chemists or simply all chemists refer to it as nothingness. So, at the center of an atom is a smaller particle called quarks, the father of energies, which was produced by the mother of all energies we term as biaps. You see, in the nucleus of an atom, there's a dense cluster of protons and neutrons on the outside of a quark. Together, the proton, which has a positive charge, and the neutron, which has no charge, is called nucleons. All atoms with an atomic weight higher than one has a neutron. That means that the only element that does not have a neutron is hydrogen. The reason being is hydrogen is at the center of all things and at the rim of all things at the same time, which merely means that it is in transit from the etheric realm to the physical realm, appearing slightly different from the following elements, yet undifferentiated. For hydrogen is in all things and where it is not, there is no life. It is one and alone, being the first on the element chart. Now, neutrons are produced because of nuclear reactions of hydrogen multiplying itself to give you the 99 natural occurring elements, which are all composed of quarks, the created state of nothingness. Quarks are any of the six hypothetical particles believed to form the basic constituent of the elementary particles. These six quarks are called up, down, strange, charm, bottom, and top. For example, a proton which forms by itself is composed of a triad of two up quarks and one down quark. And the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom determines what element it is, which becomes the element's atomic number. As you can see, all things in this material realm are made up of atoms, which are in itself made up of smaller particles called quarks that are weightless. What scientists don't know is there are even smaller particles than the quarks. You see, when the hydrogen atom splits, it becomes quarks. When the two pair of quarks splits, it becomes biaps, which is short for bi apertures or two apertures of quarks. And each biaperture, again, subdivides to reveal zeddies. Zeddies were more visible when the universe was in its original divine ordinal atmosphere, which was much hotter. The universe today, in its natural form, is too cold for Zeti particles to exist. However, with a little help, they can be revealed by simply speeding up atoms in a circular motion to the point where it catches up with itself. Yes, time travel. Causing the particle to collide. And this collision of particles causes intense heat that yields the Zetis. We're talking about when matter meets antimatter, it results in annihilation and from the straight energies it gathers itself to bring about alternate things in a vacuum, yet for a short time in the physical realm. Then it goes back on into existence. For atoms or time solar systems charged with electronic and magnetic powers living on borrowed time. So, quarks, biaps, and zeddies are weightless with specific patterns. Now, if there is a pattern, then there is a form, and if there is a form, then there must be a weight. Modern scientists, however, does not have the necessary machinery to calculate the weight of subatomic particles. And of course, if they can make such a machine, this will also reveal that the periodic table of elements is in fact wrong. Now, we cannot talk about subatomic particles without talking about their fundamental interactions. Subatomic particles interact by way of forces, that is, the gravitational force, which is symbolic of physical attraction. 
It is by far the weakest of all the forces, yet it has an infinite range for it holds the planets, stars, and galaxies together. Electromagnetic force, which is symbolic of emotions, for it is electric charge in motion, which creates the opposite of itself, magnetism. The weak force, which is symbolic of love, for it mediates the process of radioactive decay and helps to power the sun, the source of your form of life. And the strong force, which is symbolic of hate, for it binds the quarks to make protons and neutrons by weaving webs of energy into form we call matter. These are the nuclear forces. So, beneath and beyond the atom is ether, things without what you know as form on your seven realms of existence, which is really nine, to those who know. The first being the physical plane in which we reside. The second is the plane of force, which is the energies that makes up what you call nature. These two planes identify some or manifestation. The word manifestation here is key, for it etymologically means to reveal what is secret. And one of the best kept secrets is the term atom was borrowed from the Egyptian deity Atum, the head of the nine enads, which predates the atom. The word atom comes from the Greek word atomos, which means uncut. And since the ancient Egyptian suf, called hieroglyphics today, predates the Greeks Latin and English, it should be clear that the intonation of atom had to come from atum, which is also spelled A-T-O-M, the first of the 99 deities who is equivalent to the 99 manifested energies you now know as the 99 naturally occurring elements. The story goes, Atum Re, or the sun deity, came from the primordial waters of Nun, and Nunet, the deities of primeval waters. In other words, the fire, or the light of the sun, came from the deep darkness of the cosmos, or simply, the fire came from the water. Now, I know this sounds paradoxical, for water is used to out fire. The very reason is called Egyptian mysteries, for the laymans are not supposed to get it. But let me explain. All of creation is light and darkness, yet the creator must be dark. Darkness is made of visible and invisible rays of light in darkness that can be seen or not seen at all. Darkness is all energies, substances, liquid, gases, and all physical life needs water to exist. And to be clear, the light is the fire and the darkness is the waters. Fire gives off smoke and water gives off vapors. In reality, they both are the same, just different in degrees of vibration. And so, these Egyptian deities, Nun and Nunet, two of the Agdords, are water deities that relates to you, for three-fourths of your body is water. Water is the most important thing in existence, and it is needed as a source of conduction. Conduction means to lead or guide. So the primordial waters is the transmission by which heat, electricity, and sound can travel or be guided. For we all reside in the darkness of the universe. The guiding forces of this physical life can be seen as Shu, the male deity of air, and Tefnut, the female deity of moisture, who is the mother of Geb, the male deity of earth, and Nut, the female deity of the sky. Which leads into Asar, the male deity of vegetation, Aset, the female deity of red blood cells, Satuk, the male deity of ignorance, and Neptit, the female deity of white blood cells, which leads into humankind. What I am expressing to you is that the ancient Egyptians were known as alchemists, from alchemy, the highest form of chemistry, making them all chemists, or simply all chemists. As you can see, their names and what is ascribed to these deities, they began before the manifestation of nature and matter as you know it. Meaning, they are what is referred to as plasmatic energies. Plasmatic is from plasma, which means to mold, where energies is molded into images called etherians. This puts them in subatomic or subatom energies as quarks, biaps, and zeddies. With the information just disclosed, you should now be able to see where religious people got their concept of God living in a spiritual realm other than the physical realm, which would be the link from the material plane into the plane of force, onto what becomes known as the spiritual plane, then the mental plane. Notice, 
that these are four planes and the set number used to describe the positions and energy of an electron in an atom are called quantum numbers. And get this, there are four quantum numbers, things that make you go, hmm. I'm Kef Ray, and this is Back to the Basic. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, share, and subscribe. Facts we stated, you wanna know something, go back to basics. Most saw a trap and was called the Matrix. The world fibbled lies, yet it's hard to face it. So I spread truth, hope you embrace it.